everyone and welcome to the talk. And uh, I, my name is Chu, and I'm from the Labs file system team. And uh, if you want to know what I'm doing, I'm mostly working on ButterFS uh, and uh, all, almost all the sub file system of ButterFS has some contribution from me. You can search, uh, you can search this address from the mainline kernel and we'll find a lot of uh, commits from me. And if you are more interested, you can just search my name and it will, you can also find some older uh, contributions from when I was in Fujits. And uh, so let's talk about the topic today. Uh, the topic is called Read 56 in ButterFS and the subtitle is New Challenges for Older Tricks. Uh, first thing, first, let's talk about uh, uh, what we are, what this talk will cover. The first thing is, ButterFS provides uh, its own read 56 profile, along with other profiles like read 1, read 0, read 10, and read even recently read 1C3, read 1C4. But uh, compared to other profiles, read 5 has a very bad reputation. If you just Google seeing something like uh, ButterFS read 56, uh, you can find uh, these two things. The first is from our, our main page. We have an uh, online documentation for all our main page and it have a dedicated sector for read 56 so you can guess what is going wrong and furthermore there is some there is a post on reddit and you can know uh, there are a lot of problems related in fact uh, the expectation for read 1 read 10 is very different the current expectation is we can not only provide all the backup things from read one, but also you can run your file system without any problems while you are wiping one of the disk over and over again, and you will have nothing wrong if you are using read one, read 10 at all. That's our regular expectation for ButterFS profiles, but for read five, no. You don't even need to wipe the disks again and again. You can already have a lot of cases to lose your data. So this provides the basis for the talk that um, ButterFS Read 5 has its problems. So in this talk, we will cover three things. First is what is Read 56? This is a generic idea that is not only specific to ButterFS. And then what is wrong with ButterFS Read 56? And finally, we have some new challenges, which is very unexpected. In fact, this new challenge is just emerged in recent years. So, so I don't want to spoil, but uh, after the talk, you will know why we have something unresolved until the day. And so let's talk about read 56. But before read 56, we need to talk about something called read 4. In fact, read 4 is the basis for read 56. The read 4 itself is pretty simple. If you look at this um, picture, you can get a um, basic idea. Uh, first, uh, for disk 1, 2, 3, it's mostly read 0. You write a block of data 1 into disk 1, block of data 2 into disk 2, and uh, block 3 into disk 3, and then you go to the next uh, data 4 into disk 1, and uh, so, so on and so forth. But uh, there is a disk 4 which contains the parity. For example, in this case, uh, this is the parity of what data one, two, three. And the parity is calculated using XOR. It's just XOR all the data from one, two, three, and you get the parity. And um, for if you are just reading data, it's pretty simple. You ignore disk four completely and uh, treat uh, this like a read zero. That is how we do read normally. And uh, when there is a disk, when there is a disk lost, for example, disk three, sorry, disk three get uh, lost. For example, it just give up. And then if you want to read data three, you XOR data one, data two, and the parity, you will get data three because this is par XOR. So in short, it can tolerate one missing disk. That's pretty straightforward. But the problem is every time you write into, for example, I write data one first and do a sync. It's pretty common to do a synchronized write. And then we have to update the parity. Then later we update data two. 
we need to update parity again. And then later we I write data three. We write need to update parity again. This means although each disk each data disk only get one write, the parity gets three times the write. This is because any data block update will re, will result in the corresponding parity update. This can be a problem, especially in data four case. If you, we are doing a synchronized write through the disk, the disk four will have the heaviest load because he has to up, update all the parity for all the writes. So that is a problem. Then we have read five, which is an imp can be considered as a improved read four. The improve comes from rotation. In fact, this is a better fast read five because it uses a certain rotation algorithm. For example, for this part, it's uh, the same as data uh, read four, and uh, for next part, we rotate the sequence by one, and you can see that is how we do the rotation. That is exactly what we better fast do. The Problem of parity update is still there. For example, we write one, two, three, and after each write, we do a sync. Then parity on this four still need to do, do three times write. But uh, but when we write enough data, the parity get since parity get rotated, the write load get a uh, load dispute uh, load balanced to all the disks. So that is uh, uh, the improvement. And uh, that's why read five is uh, way more common than read four because it load balance the parity update. Then we come to read six. The read read five can only tolerate one device lost, which is the same as read four. Uh, read five introduces a new uh, parity called Q. That is, that means we have two uh, parity stripes P and Q. The Q calculation is more complex, but the P is the same as read the five. The Q is we it's too complex that let uh, let me if you are interested in how Q is calculated, please check the Wikipedia. It's really out of the context of this talk. But the the idea is with P and Q we can tolerate two disks. For example, if we lost this two disks. Then we can use P and data two to recalculate data one first. And uh, if you want to recover P, we can use a recover data one to and the data two to recover P. This is uh, the the basic idea. And uh, just like read five, read six also introduced the rotation. The rotation is the same, just uh, by one disk. And so that is the read five six overall. The idea is pretty simple. I guess everyone with some uh, computer science background, no, 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 no need for computer ba uh, science background. Anyone understand uh, with some usage of Linux would uh, have uh, would be pretty familiar with uh, all the concept, but uh, the truth is there are some pitfalls. So let's talk about the hidden pitfalls for read 5.6. There are several Pitfalls. First is the multi-device synchronization. The multi-device synchronization. Uh, sorry, can you hear me? Okay, can everyone hear me? We can still hear you. Yes. Okay. I guess it's just the camera get lost. So uh, next time I will not interrupt when the when the camera lost. So the first thing is multi-device synchronization. As you know, there are several disks here. So every time we write, um, for example, we want to write a full stripe. A full stripe is a, a is a term mostly used in ButterFS, but I guess it's also used in other read five six. Uh, this is a full stripe, include all the data and its par parity. For example, if we want to write a full stripe, at here. So we needed to submit the data one to disk one, data two to disk uh, to disk two, and data three to disk three, and uh, finally parity to disk four. But uh, this disk can have different speed, and uh, furthermore, we can have power loss during the write. For example, when we are writing this data, the first stripe we 
have a data loss, a power loss, and then data fault didn't reach disk at all. Only one, two, three reach the disk. This will cause a, a synchronization problem. So that is problem one. The second problem, the, the, the third, second and the third problem is not specific to ButterFS. Uh, no, 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 sorry. All the three points are not specific to ButterFS. And but for this tool, ButterFS has a way to solve it later. But a regular read file may or may not have a, a, a way to solve. So let me explain the first, the second one, rotten bit detection. Oh, sorry, I guess it's not really clear to see, but there is some thing, uh, some uh, some stripe lines here. This mean this means that data one has rotten bits. Rotten bits can be called uh, caused by different things. Uh, the most common one just is the data on the disk is not reliable. Some disks may return a uh, read error if it, if it has internal checksum, but some disks may not. We cannot really trust hardware, especially after recent uh, hardware bugs like uh, Spectral and things like that. So we we must we must assume that when there is some data corruption, the disk may not report it to us and it may return the error data directly to us. In that case, if we know the data one is corrupted, it's pretty simple. Just go to the regular read 56 uh, recovery path. But uh, how do you know that? How do you know there is the data one is corrupted? The, the third one is uh, even worse. It can make one corruption spread to the other. So I will explain the destructive read and modify write cycle in the next slide more detail with more details. Oh, sorry. Uh, this will be expanded later, but not in the next slide. The next slide is talking about the read file six in ButterFS. First uh, uh, thing, how ButterFS manage different profiles. Every, if one tried ButterFS, you will see that at a mid-cafe time, ButterFS will report that uh, the metadata has on some profile. The data has on some profile. The profile can coexist. For example, uh, there is an example. There is a ButterFS that uh, has some space allocated. Uh, firstly, ButterFS has a unified logical address space. Every read write mostly happens to this address space. But uh, for the, this address space, there is uh, some range allocated, some range are not allocated. For example, for one to two gig, there is a uh, allocated read one, and its profile is metadata. And uh, then if you go to check more details, it will tell you well on which device the, this uh, read one metadata trunk is at which uh, physical location of each device. And uh, this is a read five example, which is uh, for data. And its stripe size is 64 kilo and uh, at a certain physical locations. So in this case, ButterFS has two profiles. One for read one for metadata, one for data, and it's read five. And for the gray sectors, which is not mapped, uh, read write read write on these sectors will cause an error. So that is the idea of ButterFS read five six. So yeah, the in short is ButterFS can have multiple profiles coexist on the same file system. And uh, the other thing is this trunk, this um, profiles. Uh, and the trunks are dynamic allocated. This is pretty straightforward, especially if you try to make a ButterFS on a super large device. If you try uh, things like uh, XFS or Extended 4, it will take some time to, to allocate their block groups, but ButterFS only writes the minimal and uh, later allocate the new block groups uh, on demand. So let's talk about the, the problems in read 5.6, especially in ButterFS. The first thing is write hole. Write hole mostly happens when, when we are doing some write and then a power loss. This means uh, the, the, da the data on different devices has uh, desynchronized. 
this problem is not in the more generic software read file CX solution because they have some tried and true solution we will talk later. So in short, this is but event specific and all other read file CX have already solved that. But uh, later we will know why we haven't solved it yet. Another thing is uh, until recently, uh, butterfly read file CX doesn't support some page. The sample page means uh, the block size used by the file system is sm smaller than the page size. In fact, uh, just in 5.16, ButterFS has no subpage support at all. Not uh, only uh, no subpage support to read file 6, but uh, all ButterFS doesn't support subpage. Later, we solved the problem by introducing subpage support for uh, in 5.16, but uh, at that time, the reader file six is not a, a, a not a beloved children, and uh, until very recently we added that back to reader file six. Another thing is parity update. As I mentioned, every update in the data should have its corresponding parity updated. So that means even if we have only one bytes. Needed to uh, one sector, one block needed to be updated in the data stripe. We at least needed to update the corresponding block in parity. But ButterFS not only updates the block, but it writes it updates the full stripe for parity. One may ask, it's not a problem at all. It's just some extra I/O. But later I will explain why this can cause data corruption. And finally, the, the common destructive IMW, which is common to all read file 6. In fact, uh, it's not work. Uh, yeah, it's still working progress. I have already submitted the pro approval concept uh, patch set to the mail list. And I believe uh, this can be solved uh, pretty soon. So let's talk about the, 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 the problems one by one. First, uh, thing is the right hole, which means the, the data is not synchronized across all disks. There are some existing solutions. The first one, the journal writer intent bitmap, is uh, tried and true, and uh, the, the software reader file 6 uh, provided by Lita kernel goes this way. It's really tried and true, but uh, it has some performance penalty. The general idea is before we write some data into data one, data two, data three, and a parity, we first write them into some specific location of the disk. And later we write it back. If we power loss, this data gets lost, but uh, this write has to be flushed to disk before we do the real write. And so even if we got a power loss, we still get the journal. The, 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 the data to be written at a journal and write it back at recovery time. But the problem is we have to write two copy of data, one to, uh, one to the journal, which is uh, mostly at the head of the device, and later the real data. That, so that's why we will have some small uh, performance penalty. But it could not handle the new challenges. I'm mentioning the new challenges again and again. It will be mentioned finally. But it's really a new challenge. So new that the, the, existing, the existing solution will not work at all. And then there is another solution. We just avoid substripe right at all. The idea is even uh, if we, we are just writing, uh, the idea is like this. For example, if there is already data write, written to data one and uh, to parity one, if we want to new, write a new data, we normally write it there, right here and update the parity. But this, if we got a power loss, this two get desynchronized and it would be a problem. So the idea is we avoid a seven Substripe write at all. That means if we want to write data two, we write it to the next stripe, next the first stripe. The problem 
is you can already see that we waste a lot of space. This space we didn't use, we didn't use, we didn't use. The result is, for the worst case scenario, if we write, uh, do synchronize the write, we will be worse than read one because all this space are wasted. Another way is uh, do some extra COW and the extra mapping. This is a new solution for the new challenge. So we will, I will talk it later. Yeah, so new challenges will be the last part. Then the other problem is the destructive MW problem. This is very related to the rotten bit problem. For example, we have a rotten bit at data one. So far, there is only data one crafted. So that is not a big deal. But what if we want to write some data into data two? In that case, the, we have to go to the IMW circle, which means that we first read. We are writing data two, but we at least need to read data one and data three. And then we know data one, data two, which is the data we want to write, data three. We run XOR to get a new parity. But the problem is data one is crafted. We are using the crafted data to create a new parity. And now parity one, two, three is also generated with crafted data. And later, if by some by some method we know data one is crafted, and we have already written the new parity into disk, we can no longer recover it because the parity, new parity is crack, crack, uh, calculated using the crafted data. So now we have two crafted things. The old data one is crafted, and the new parity is also crafted. So we are generating crafted parity using crafted data without knowing that. But there is something new which is specific to ButterFS that ButterFS has data checksum. If uh, this data one to data three are also ButterFS data, we, they may have data checksum. If by that case, if we are writing data two, we can read the data one, we can read the data three, but we also can read the checksum for data one, the checksum for data three, and we check if they match each other. And uh, we check that, we find out that data three is okay. That's great, but data one is not. If data one is not great, is not correct, we can read this one, this two. We also need to verify data two, of course. And if data two pass the checksum, we can regenerate data one. And we can have a corrected data one, write it back to disk and uh, then do the correct IMW and solve the problem. This sure will cause a performance problem because now we are not only read read the data we are not not writing to, but also we are read the data we are writing to, and we are reading the parity, and we are reading their checksum for this three. So that would cause definitely cause performance penalty. But uh, but I, I guess it's an example because we are avoiding problem of corrupted data spreading like a disease. And another thing is this is only causing pro, a prof, performance problem for substripe write, which means we need to do the IMW. If we are writing a full stripe like this, we can just ignore that. So that should be no problem. It's working pro progress and I have already submitted the proof of concept patches to it. And uh, I guess we can later improve the performance, but the overall idea is, uh, is the same. It can slightly reduce the write hole problem. For example, if we have previous data write uh, desynchronized, uh, and we can we find out that data one has checks out, uh, which is not, uh, not, not matched the cost by the write hole, we can recover that. The, 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 the requirement is that data two and data three and the parity is not corrupted. So it can only partially reduce the problem. And uh, let's talk about the next thing, which is uh, really the, the main dish of the talk is 
Zona device. The Zona device uh, is pretty, I guess it's pretty new. Uh, it's mostly pushed by uh, hard disk drive, uh, hard disk vendors like uh, West Digital. I guess West Digital is the biggest pusher. The idea is um, the device will have uh, a lot of zones. Its zones has uh, some certain uh, features. For example, if the zone is called a sequence, sequential zone, it behave mostly like a tape, really mostly like, like a tape. The idea is there for each zone, there will, will be a point recording the last right position. And you can only write at the last right position, aka the right point position. You can only write data at there, at there. If you write a data before the pointer, it will the device will return an error directly and uh, not allowing you to write back. So that means it's like a tape. You can only write forward, write forward, write forward. And when you really want to reclaim the zone, you can only discard all its data. So that kills one feature we rely on on read file six. We can no longer do overwrite. For this is especially important for parity because parity must be updated every time any its corresponding data stripe get updated. So this is really a new challenge. Another challenge is if you are only writing to a certain point, it will cause a performance bottleneck. So the zone device introduced a new thing that you can submit multiple writes to the same point, but which one got, with, got into which physical location, it will be determined by the, the, by the zone device, which means that you will not really know where the write will reach. This is only for the QDEPs uh, uh, larger than one cases. So either you sacrifice performance and only submit one write per, per time, uh, per, uh, per request, or you submit a lot of them in a parallel, but uh, then you will not know which write uh, is uh, reached which uh, location on disk. Uh, the, the real position it, should, it arrived can only be determined after the write finished, which is pretty tricky, at least. So with the new challenge here, oh, by the way, the zone device is only supported by two file systems right now. One is by FS, the other is FS2, FS, uh, F2 FS. So you can see it's really a, a challenge. A lot of um, existing file system like uh, XFS, or extended for is based on journal. The journal will be overwrite, overwritten again and again. So that is one thing it's not uh, supported. Another thing is they don't uh, do copy on write for their data. So the, their data can also be overwritten. So that means those traditional file system is not supported for zone device at all. With the new challenge, uh, we have uh, more problems for Reader 56. The first thing is uh, things uh, we, if we want to some acceptable performance, we have to submit the writes in parallel, which means that Q depth is uh, larger than one, which means we we are no longer really know each write will will reach which uh, physical location. So at, at least we need uh, some extra mapping. We are not uh, only using the, uh, we need uh, this extra mapping to address the uncertainty of the write. Another thing is we need to copy on write because uh, the parity can no longer be write uh, overwritten at all because it's non device. Then we have come to a new problem because we cannot do the, Override. For example, there is a three disk reader file. This is a data one, data two, uh, and the parity. And this is data three. Uh, sorry, sorry. All of this are data one. All of this is data two. 
all of this is parity. So first uh, we write a, a block of data. This uh, is a stripe, but uh, we are just uh, writing a block of the stripe. So the data one reached to disk one, that's no problem, straightforward. And then we needed to calculate update uh, parity for disk three. But when we write a data two, there comes a problem. Data two can still reach the, the, the same position of the, the vertical stripe, but it's parity can a lot because the after after this write, the write pointer has already been forwarded to the next block. So it means that the, the new parity has to be written here. And you can see the problem. We if there is a more is a more stripes, if we do this right again and again, we can easily exhaust disk three, but we have only used half the space of disk one and disk two. That is the biggest problem. It's uh, less worse than the wider substripe at all situation, but uh, it's still a pretty big problem. So that is a dilemma between parity update and space efficiency. That is uh, the first problem. Oh, uh, that is the last problem, in fact. That is the biggest problem, the Johannes, which is uh, um, our ex teammate, which is now in, uh, which uh, he is now in, uh, uh, who is now working for West Digit and pushing for its uh, solution for this one. Uh, he has a feature called the Red Stripe Tree to do the mapping thing. And, uh, but uh, currently that thing cannot handle Red 56 at all. As mentioned, there will always be a problem here with the, the, the free space problem. But FS is not that good for its uh, free space management already. If you check the Bugzilla, there are, uh, there are sometimes, uh, all, there are sometimes, uh, there are still some Bugzilla remaining here related to Eno space, unexpected Eno space there. So I don't know how they could handle this well. But uh, I hope they get a good idea. Oh. Okay, let me check. Yeah. Uh, did, uh, did you mean that um, we don't do a block level readify at all and um, do something like like, but, but the problem is uh, if we do something completely in the file system, how do we provide a, a robust uh, backup thing? For example, for read file 6, uh, we can have three disks, we can lost one completely, or uh, lost the data one, which lost half of the data completely. I have considered the idea of some extra uh, contents like um, the extra parity at a file system level. But in that case, I'm not sure how to handle the disk loss case because that uh, can be a very big uh, part of the data lost. For example, currently we can lost half of the data. Yeah, so, so maybe I will repeat the question as Giovanni said. Uh, and then actually the question was a bit more about like the read modified write destructive cycle. You know, it just took me some time to formulate my thoughts. <laughs> so, so it's not really related directly to this uh, problem with zone devices. It's about the general, like my question is regarding the general read modify write destructive cycle you were speaking a while ago. Yes. Uh, so, so here, like, you know, we have the problem that the data one could be clobbered and we could use this like destructed data for computing the parity when writing the first stripe again, because we have modified, say, the data two block. Yeah, that's the read, modify, write problem. Uh, and now if we are actually in the file system, we don't need to lo load the full stripe to actually recompute the parity. Yeah? What we could do also is that instead of like loading 
data one and data three so that we can like compute normally the parity from data one, data two, and data three. We could instead subtract the original content of the data two block from the parity and then add the new content of the data two block to the parity. And because of the properties of parity, because it's basically just a bit sum, uh, it will like be again the correctly computed parity. Uh, so you that uh, that means um, we don't overwrite the data to right. It's a COW so, solution. Yeah, so it will use COW. It will use the fact that in fact we still have the old content because of co. So we still have the old content of the block, or we could just subtract it before actually we start allowing modification to the blocks. Yeah. It yeah, depends. but in that case, uh, data one is still corrupted. As long yes. as we calculate the new parity using data one, the parity is not reliable. So the parity would be still correct yeah, because we didn't use the new, the corrupted version of data one. Uh, uh, the, in the... New, the new parity is corrupted, but the older is still correct, right? You, you so so the new correct. parity will be still correct. You know, even if we just, if we update the parity, by just subtracting data two, like the old version of data two and adding new version of data two, then we didn't use the corrupted version of data one at all during the oh, parity. Oh, I got your point. I got your point. I got your point. And so, so the parity would be still correct. Yeah. But the only thing we need to verify is that the data two we are modifying is correct. So like basically before we allow modifying a block, we would have to verify that the BTRFS checksum is correct. And then we will allow modification of this block and you know update it. And yeah. like that was just an and it would like allow modify recomputing the parity with less IOs. Yeah, we don't have to load all, all the other blocks in the stripe and verify their checksum. So it could be a faster way, but on on the other hand, I understand maybe more complex. So it was just an yeah, idea yeah, yeah. to float. Yeah. yeah. Okay. That, that is a very interesting solution. And um, yeah, I, I think it has its uh, interesting things. But uh, yeah, I believe it's very interesting. But uh, currently, we just read the full stripe. The, the, the time to read a full stripe is the same as a read a single stripe because we submit to different disks. So uh, I believe it's very interesting, and I can definitely look into the possibility of implementing it. But uh, so far, since we need to read a checksum for data two already, and uh, according to my uh, calculation, the checksum of this three back to, uh, the three blocks of a full stripe is always small enough to be done in one search in ButterFS. Because our block uh, set stripe size is much smaller, it's uh, only 64 kilos. So uh, we are small enough to fetch all the checksum for all the sectors just in one go. So in that case, since we have everything, the, the current uh, checksum for every data and the repair, I believe it's uh, not that slower compared to okay. Yeah. yeah, but it's very interesting. Yeah. I never considered that we can go that path at all. So yeah, that's very interesting. Thank you very much. And uh, so back to the talk. The <laughs> yeah, in fact, there is nothing left at all. So the TLDR of the talk is yeah, we are doing a lot of existing fixes. Uh, some less parity update. This parity update problem is related to that IMW, destructive IMW, because we are, if we are always update parity, no matter what of the full parity, it can have a higher chance if there is some, some rotten bit. So the corruption chance get, get uh, increased. So less parity update, in fact, is a good thing. Yeah, thank you very much. It's going to finish in five minutes, no problem. And then it's the subpage support. The subpage support get merged recently, so not a big pro deal. And the better recovery, this is the the this is another problem that we are using cached stripe for recovery in ButterFS, and that cached data can be incorrect. That is a pretty simple fix, so I'm not going to uh, mention much. And the destructive MW problem, 
we have already provided a, a way to solve it. The patch set is already submitted to the upstream mailing list. And how to handle zone device? This is the problem. The previously I mentioned that we are using journal device, which uh, will be a big no for zone device at all because journal will be overwritten. So there are two solutions. One, we go with the tried and true and let the zone guys figure out a way. The other way is to let the zone guys figure out a way and we emulate the regular device like a zone device, which um, they call silver bullet. But uh, personally, I'm not a big fan of silver bullet. There are some very bad examples like GNOME 3. Someone may already uh, is already using GNOME 3, but uh, the early days of GNOME 3 is not that good. The same can be applied to Windows 8, which want to unify desktop and uh, uh, tablets, which uh, I, I'm pretty sure no one is using Windows 8, right? So you can see the problem. Uh, so that's why we don't have a, a fix. A, a we haven't determined how to fix the the right hole problem. But uh, all this, I believe, can be done no matter if it's zoned or not zoned. So that's why the zone device is a new challenge. And uh, I think that's all from my talk. And if you have any questions, feel free to ask. I guess no questions. That's um, that's pretty good for the schedule, I guess. So I guess the this talk would bang on on the schedule part, at least. And if you have any questions, feel free to go this this mail address, and uh, I will always check. I will check the mail very frequently. So feel free if you have any questions related to that. And uh, I think that's all from, from my talk. And uh, so have a nice day, everyone.